Hello. Hi, Swanee and Darius. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, today we're going to have a discussion with um, mm -hmm. Mayor Virginia Swanson, affectionately known in the photo community as Swanee, to many of you who may be watching, um, and Darius Himes on the occasion of the publication of Publish Your Photography Book, the third edition. So That's Mary Virginia Swanson, <laughs> you're excited now, I uh, served as a curator of photography in the Minneapolis Institute of Art and the Friends of Photography. She also worked with Friends of Photography in Carmel, California. She was in special projects at Magnum Photos. And in 1990, she launched Swanstock, a unique agency managing licensing rights for fine art photographers. Since then, she has partnered with um, since then, she has worked with individual photographers through her own consulting firm and more recently partnered with La Luz Workshops, especially for the Publish Your Photography book, Understanding the Path to Bringing Your Photographic Projects to Publication, where Darius Himes was also a noted professional speaker. Himes uh, oversees a global team producing auctions and exhibitions as the international head of photographs for famed auction house Christie's, and he's been there since 2014. He was previously director at Franco Gallery in San Francisco and co-founder of Radius Books, the publisher of the new edition of this book. I've known well, Darius and I, and also Swanee, who have known each other for many years. And Darius and I knew each other when we were both at Photo Eye Books, where Darius took on the role of founding editor at Photo Eye Booklist. I watched this quarterly publication evolve over the years into a beautiful object worthy of newsstand on par with many of the contemporary art periodicals. The depth of the research uh, included interviews, book reviews, and articles also including the multi-series that Himes and Swanson started that led us to the discussion today for Publish Your, Photo, Publish Your Photography Book, third edition. And I understand it's also an anniversary this year too. So you wanna tell us what that is? Dating us a little bit? <laughs> yeah, it was 2003 that Darius first invited me to collaborate with him and we've been writing about photo books together for 20 years now. Amazing. That's wow. just crazy. <clears throat> yeah, we used, Darius, we, used, we started when you were like 12, right? Is that right? <laughs> I know. Well, Mel Melanie somehow is in a, is in a time warp because you don't look like you've aged at all <laughs> yeah, in the last okay. 20 years. But no, it's true. I mean, we were, when I came to Santa Fe in 1998, you were already at the bookstore. And I started working part-time at PhotoEye then when I was a graduate student at St. John's College there in Santa Fe. And then things evolved, as you mentioned, the, the mail order catalog that uh, Rick and Vicki had done for many, many years. Um, we morphed it into this quarterly journal about photography books. And then it, it, the editorial content grew and grew. And I started asking other people to write. And I invited Swanee to start this column about photography books. And then that's what eventually became the first edition of Publish Your Photography Book, which I think was published in 2010. Is that right? 11 for number one. And, and I will a tiny bit and say that as we were scripting it out really, and, and we, we came up with the 12 columns before we knew it, just in terms of the process of learning that we wanted our readers to go through, we knew that it would be a book one day, but what ended up happening was, Darius, you went on to found Radius, and yeah. in the meantime, the field really changed a lot. And Melanie, yeah. what we were thinking about and realizing was that self-publishing was completely possible at that point. Blurb was here to stay. All these different things were happening where people could learn to self-publish. At the same time, the collectible photo book was absolutely on the rise. You know, the Par Badger books, the Roth book before that, there was this, uh, this field that, the, in it, within a field of collecting that was forming. So when, uh, when that really came to pass, we just went, you know what? I think maybe it is time for this to be a book. And we added more on those two things, especially the self-publishing collectability and updated the rest of it as well. But that's when number one came. And that sold fairly quickly in our publisher did a second edition 2014 yeah yeah well and i was just going to add that the, I, i'm remembering back the last issue of the photo i the print issue of the photo i book list 
was in the fall of 2007. And Melanie, you remember that had the Paul Graham photograph of the man mowing, mowing the lawn. And it was for a shimmer of possibility that had just been published by Steidel Mac. And, and that was also the first season of books that Radius published was also in fall of 2007. So it was sort of like the magazine was coming to a close, Radius was launching. Um, and, and I just have to say, you know, those years, that, that sort of 10 year period, nine year period at Photo Eye, where you and I, Melanie and I worked so closely together and I miss those days, it was so much fun. And it was a lot, it was a lot of hard work, but we learned, you know, we thought in terms of publishers and their seasonal lists and the catalogs would come in for the spring and the fall lists. And so I'm sure the two of us know, can, can name all sorts of publishers just by like glancing at the spine and knowing what logo is in the bottom, you know, the bottom of the spine. And we know what season and what, who the publisher was and all of that. That was sort of great training for a long time to understand books and publishers and how it all, how all of that industry worked. Yeah. My son would even, when he was like two years old, I think it was even just an aperture logo. He would walk along my shelves and he would just go, mom, you have a lot of these. <laughs> and he would point at the aperture logo. So there you go. There's some good branding. If like a three or maybe three years old, like making, making him a prodigy that he is anyway. But yeah, it's just like, there's a sign there about branding and selecting a really good logo, even for the spine of your book. So um, when, you, when you think about Radius at that time, 2007, right? Primarily monographs at that point, our book really wasn't a match for mm -hmm. at that time. And we went with Princeton Architectural Press, who did great books about design and and books filled with really dense information. Yeah. yeah, it it was perfect for us for those years. But when when Princeton Architectural Press sold through those editions and decided not to invest in the reprint and the time of of research and such for us. We thought about Radius because at that point, Radius had evolved to the extent that our book really fit their audience and David took it to the board and everyone kind of felt that a book on books didn't didn't fall outside the boundaries anymore and so that's where we are today in 2023 with this becoming a, a radius book and um, there's also there's also a through line just to add this that um while Princeton Architectural Press was the publisher for the first two editions it was David Chicky and also the designer Masumi Shibata, who was at Radius at the time, who designed and we shot all of the all of the photographs of books there um, at the Radius studios as they were at, at the time. So even so they were involved. David was very much involved um, from the beginning um, with that aspect of it. So it felt like a natural thing to bring it to Radius to see if they would want to do the third edition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And Radius also is incredibly popular too for people who want to publish books. So it becomes a vehicle for them to actually probably send it out to other people, especially, which we'll talk about a little bit later on with the website that you have coming up that, um, that will act as an incredible resource. So speaking about both of the editions, because I do have um, uh, the... Yeah the new, the um, second edition, the revised edition, and then the new one here, which is a little bit larger, um, maybe in page count, I haven't looked at page count, but I know for sure, and uh, the size, and in addition to that, there's a little workbook. So uh, pulling out the workbook too, we'll talk a little bit more about that one in depth, but what is, what's new about this book? Uh, what's new about this edition? Well, the, as Swanee was mentioning earlier, many aspects of the of the photography book industry have changed. But just to pull back for a second to say the broader the the broad overview of what our book is about is that half of the book is written by by Swanee and I, half of the content is sort of written by us, and it's very much about the principles of publishing, and many of those principles have not changed. So thinking about whether you want to self-publish, whether you should search for a publisher, what it, what it means to work with a publisher, what it means to 
have an editor. What, what does an editor do? What does a designer do? What does a marketing plan look like? Many of those are very fundamental. And that's kind of the heart of the book, or, or you could say the, the skeleton, the structure of the book. And then the remaining, there's another half of the content are industry voices. And those, those voices, almost 100% of that content has completely changed in this new edition. So lots of people have either moved on or left the industry, or we wanted to simply change it up because there's new voices and we've added new case studies. So that's the kind of bigger picture is that it's about publishing. How does publishing work? And then the voices that that share their their knowledge about their specific role within publishing, much of that is, is brand, all of that is brand new. You know, when we talked about self-publishing in the earlier books, it was primarily a response to not necessarily getting the contract that you wanted from a publisher. Whereas today, for many people, self-publishing is by far their first choice. And so we go much, much deeper. There's a full extensive section just on self-publishing. Another thing that I think is important to point out is that the book now in our minds and in our field goes far beyond the published book, the small press, the self-published, and into the limited edition, the collectible, and in many cases, <clears throat> pardon me, the artist made or the, the handmade book too. So the, the reach of it is much further. The audience for each is discussed all the way down to a round table of collectors that are academic libraries, curatorial libraries, public libraries, and private collectors who are interested in the book object. So it's it's a much broader purview, and I think more reflective of where we are when we think about a photo book today. Did you have a lot of the special collections voices in the in the 2014 edition? No. Um, almost 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 none and this aspect swanee is it's so right to point out that it's it's about publishing but it's also about the sort of the community that supports the publishing activities so it's not just about you know an editor and a publisher and a designer and marketing it's about also it, there's there's a there's a round table about the sort of photo book community and the 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 way fairs have been working places like Perry photo and and um, the New York art book fair so it is really about like this whole community around photo book publishing from limit from handmade artist book to self published books to trade books so it's it really spans the runs the whole gamut there. Yeah. And do you expand on the idea of what is a self published book because I found that in teaching some of my workshops people think of. Um, trade edition books and self-published books in a very limited sort of way. And yeah. I know that, uh, for instance, you've got some illustrations with some really beautiful spiral bound books mm -hmm. that are included in there. So, yeah. so how do you kind of talk about the idea of self-published? Because self-published could be just a very small zine all the way up to maybe that limited edition that you're speaking of that goes into a special collection. Absolutely true. And many self-published books are even sheets in portfolio boxes like Ian Van Collar and um, Lisa Nevensall, whose example we use as a prospectus, you know, different language in talking to, to those buyers of, the, of that as well. I think one of the things that we realized was necessary in this edition, if we're going so deeply into the handmade, the limited edition and on up to the self-published book, we got to make sure that people understand the materiality of it. So one of the new appendices in the book is understanding paper printing and binding terms and types and um, asking so many of the artists that speak in a, in a special section on the limited edition about their choices and materiality, how the, the emotion for the reader is impacted by what they choose in their material. So that was not touched on in any depth in our earlier editions, but I think it's totally warranted today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Alejandro, uh, I, I I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the case studies that you use, but Alejandro, I just I'm, uh, like all of them are fantastic. I think all the people who you selected for your case studies are outstanding bookmakers and photographers, and they also probably are really good at networking and community and fostering that around their work. Uh, so this is kind of branching off into a multi-tier question, I think too. But um, the the 
I, I'll loop back around probably to what I was thinking of initially about Alejandro, but so the idea of subject kind of comes up in a lot of the case studies. And of course, these are the voices that are of people who are really well established, but like Alex Soth, for instance, starts talking about um, the success of some of his later books that would not have made it with Sleeping by the Mississippi, his first one. So can you just speak a little bit about maybe the idea of subject and how that kind of plays a role in your book and um, the audience versus, because I know there's a lot of people want to have a photo book. And I remember the expression, Darius, that you also use in here that says, um, who's your audience? And people say, anyone who loves photo books. <laughs> So how does the how does subject kind of play in there? And what are some creative ways that they could think about the idea about subject and expanding that maybe to different audiences? You know, for me, I always say that your your audience, of course, are your friends and your family. That's our fan club. But also anyone that's interested in your subject, whether they've bought a photo book before or a photo print before, you immediately have a bond because you both are passionate about X, this thing or this place or this concept or this crisis in the in our day. And when you add a subject into it that's clear, you know, not just a metaphorical title, but I always encourage people that have a true subject to let us know that on the cover, especially if books end up being of theirs end up being shrink wrap. You've got to communicate. That's part mm -hmm. of why we invited Alan Thomas from the University Press of Chicago to write about working with the university press because university presses are the perfect place for books that have a subject that will push that out into that subject audience in a very big way, keep things in print longer than I think a lot of the small presses would with, with a narrow subject, but just flourish in that environment. So I think that's really important. I also think that people should be thinking about marketing to that subject audience as well, whether it's lectures at an academic institution that has a complete college that's, that's dedicated to that topic, say the environment or something, be mindful of subject in your social media, certainly in your hashtag use, a lot of different ways to, to connect with that group. Again, they may never have connected with a photo book before, but you have this love of subject that draws you together. I might I might add that um, that within within the sort of what we think of as collectible photo book community and the inter, the international crowd that goes to fairs, very often the subject matter is the artist, right? Most most monographs are monographs about an artist and their work, and it and there and there's a subject embedded, but it's not necessarily the lead. And that actually that leaves out and in the whole sort of much more sort of commercial trade driven publishers that and in a way that's one of the things that Swanee is talking about, although lots of artist books also have subjects that if you are able to get that out in front of people, you may connect with people that never that you never would have if you if you don't and that's so that aspect of you know one of the things that um, I think is very strong in our book is uh, is that we really ask photographers, the audience for our book are photographers that want to publish. We ask them to do a lot of self-reflection because with, with any body of work or with any lifetime spent photographing, you can take a, a, a pile of photographs and create any number of different books out of those photographs. It's up. You need to sort of reflect on what type of book, what type of audience are you interested in. You can you can make something much more commercially oriented, or you can make something much more just for the love of you know of what you know of paper and ink and bindings. You know, it's there's any number of directions that things can go. So that's that question that you are sort of initially getting at, Melly, which is around this idea of. Um, of you know how do you approach a book and how you know as a photographer it really is about looking in the mirror and asking questions about these about all of these of all of these things and we take the approach that at least start with understanding the industry first and then through that process you may have you may want to lean in this direction or lean in that direction so 
Yeah, because yeah. I think it also can, not only is it subject, but also how you're going to tell that story. So it becomes about narrative within the book form. So it could be that the tone and the tell that you're telling about that one subject becomes something totally different if you sequence and edit in a different right. sort of way. And it may be that there's other ancillary materials that you would add to a certain mm -hmm. books, like historic maps or timelines that underscore a subject in a way that you wouldn't necessarily need in something that's more personal. Mm -hmm. You know, Melanie, I just want to point out as an example with the subject and the mm -hmm. kind of that we ask you all to do in the workbook, in this section three on marketing, the first question is to begin the process of marketing the book is important to identify potential audiences. List the subject matter and themes your work addresses. List conferences that gathers experts on your subjects together. List academic departments, including any affiliated museums or special collections. List podcasts, blogs, publications, and newsletters that focus on your subject. So those kinds of exercises are part of our questions that you should ask yourself. Yeah. So why, why do you feel like this was like a demand or is this something that just kind of evolved over, um, over the years? Did, were people asking for, wouldn't it be great if I had a place where I could write notes in your book or is this something that evolved? And can you tell me a little bit more about what's in it? So, so for me, I found people not pushing themselves in terms of research enough to really bring the story together and to bring their decisions on materiality together in, a, in an important way. So my first thoughts were, I want to have something where they have to list the different papers that they've tried, the different public um, printing processes they've explored with those papers to give the emotion and which binding. So it's kind of the PP and B we talk about a bit and there's a little append appendices, as I said, but I thought about that. And then I started to talk with people and ask to see their notebooks from their purse book. And very often they were kind of jumbled because they didn't know that this came after this or they should have thought about the launch date back when they were going on press and thinking about getting the exhibition set and all this stuff was overlapping. And so the more artists that I met with that had made their first book and we started to piece this together, they kept saying, oh my God, I wish I had this. This would have helped make things more clear. I would have been more conscientious about the team I was building and what might be missing and the dates for submitting to the book dummy competitions. And so we asked people to really put a whole calendar together and stick to it. And I think it's, you know, Darius and I both really believe this book and the workbook and the website is really going to help people make better books. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you can take the workbook and turn it into a, and just write out the questions on, you know, on your phone or on your computer, or whatever way that you take notes. But it is it it can it can be very useful to just start writing and to have a space for that. Actually, at the back of our at the back of the other editions, there was there were there was sort of space to do that. It wasn't really a workbook style, but we wanted to. And Swanee is really the driver of this. Wanted to kind of open that up and make it feel much more um, like a like a conscientious part of the process. Like you need to be very engaged in your in in the development of what you what you think a book might be and so yeah. we've had great response you know it's okay. it's amazing the people that have said oh i love it and they've started using it and i'll, I'll just tell you briefly that on the website there's a 32 page version and in our class that darius and i just held everyone made this into a binder and they're starting to use it and making their first books utilizing it and so grateful to have it I know it's going to help people make their books. Yeah, so. yeah, I can see that. I could see how it would be incredibly valuable and how that um, when you have looked at photographers' notebooks that it is kind of a jumble of different ideas. So it gives you a little structure and little bullet points and it's, you can easily take it places with you and it functions like a journal. So um, I, I wanted to, um, you mentioned the website. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about the website and what's on it? Because you said there's a lot more resources. Yeah. Um, to your point earlier, Melanie, about what was in, and Darius just mentioned what was in the last one. There was a section at the back of first and second editions. This is not an ebook that we're looking at. It's a print book. 
and it had pages and pages and pages of industry resources, pages and pages. And what I wanted to do was make a website where they could be hot links, where we could update it, not just have it be current when the book's launched, and also be downloadable PDFs. So each section in the book, which uh, starts with um, production services and print on demand, goes to book dummy competitions, working towards making the book. Then there's a list, 24 pages of publishers. There's um, all the related things to getting the book done all the way through to um, everything you need to uh, for, for limited editions and artist books and membership organizations and workshops and all of that is linkable and downloadable by section. So I think people are gonna, and we also have a space in there where we say, is there a link broken? Let us know. Is there something that we're missing? Are we missing a festival in Poland that we didn't know about? You know, send it here. So there's a pull down menu for people to give us things to add to it and we'll do our best to keep it up to date. But it's been, um, it's really gonna be exciting for people to have that. So thrilled. Yeah, I think so too. That's one thing that when when um, I did workshops that I had resources pulled for a lot of people and they find the links just incredibly valuable. So this is just a really, really rich resource that I'm sure lots of people in the photo community would be very appreciative of. You, know, Ellen, you, you mentioned Alejandro, who is a, of course a case study in the book. Um, in, the, in the workshop that we just did online, Alejandro had a conversation with John Evans, who's the curator at the MFA Houston's Hirsch Library. And it really underscored how the personal bookmaking and the, the role of the maquette, especially in Alejandro's case, how important that is to him in the making of his book and, and knowing the work well before putting it into the final form. And John talking about how important that is to the curatorial library to understand the making of the book from a curator's perspective and why they have acquired, in John's words, the uh, the full maquette history of Alejandro Cartagena to date. You know, it's an extraordinary thing. So we're going to be releasing the complete course recordings from the class as well and packaging that up um, starting September 1. So people can listen to that that may not have had a chance to be a part of that class. There's a hundred and 19 pages of links and resources from the class alone and all these amazing conversations with bookmakers. Darius did a, a small film series called Publishing Stories, where he specifically sought out photographers that had published books and asked them about their steps to a book with closing each one with um, speaking to our audience in the first time bookmaker advice that they might have. So, so much is coming uh, out there from stemming from the book to the workbook to these conversations and video clips will be all through the website as well. So much to learn. I think one of the things that's amazing about the modern age is that obviously you can go online and you can learn anything, right? But you can learn about news from Indonesia. You can learn about how to uh, how to make a sawhorse out of cardboard. You can like whatever, you can learn how to you know how to how to cook uh, Ethiopian food like it's just all there it's like everything anything you can think of is there you could I learned the other day how to unplug my bathroom sink with from you know like how to undo something and I had to watch a YouTube video right it's all there but it is sometimes difficult to find what you want and this this is most this will be most obvious to people when it comes to news so we rely on either aggregators or people that we trust to kind of pull it together, like a favorite news source or a magazine or whatever, we, we use that. And so Swanee and I have really tried to be a place that aggregates all of this information in the book and on the website, which will simply is simply publishyourphotographybook.com, all of this information about the photography book publishing world. And it's, it's, it, as she said, it's going to be lots and lots of websites, not only about publishers, but also pointing you towards other aggregators. So it's kind of like we want it to be this hub of everything that you can learn and we'll, you know, and keeping it updated and all of that. So it's, it's a guide, it's a resource, it's, 
it's like being in school. It's there's lots of pretty pictures. There's over 50 different contributors. It's inspirational, like all of that. It's meant to sort of like really be this um, this locus of of inspiration around photography book publishing. I want to just add that one of the things that we worked hard to do is to make sure that the illustrations in the book really did visualize um, what books can look like today. Like this just opened up to Sonia Thompson's book and um, the this spiral binding, but with the board that wraps around it. So it's got a flat spine. This is something uh, called where you find it, it will be. And this was produced by Conveyor and then hand bound by Sonia. But we tried to feature all kinds of things that show that a book can be really different today. It doesn't have to look the same. Lots of fun things like- oh, Yeah, here. so much variety and diversity out there. Yeah, I agree that it's, uh, and I think that is, uh, the visuals in this, as well as the words, do open it up to show people that sometimes that they apply lots of limitations to the idea of what a book actually is. And once you start exploring, which is another thing that it could be somewhat daunting, like you're talking about, like watching a lot of the videos, but as you're doing offerings, like back to Alejandro, who, um, whose piece is just amazing. I think because he talks a lot about res research and making connections and networking and um, and doing different types of books and then explore and then also continuing pr to produce books that are on uh, somewhat of a central theme. So people know what to expect, but he's also incredibly experimental. So, um, and, and I think there's, there's uh, some great, an interview with, you know, with Hans Grimmen, which I thought was incredible where he talks about, I work for you and you work for me. And then there's the other piece in here with, is it Sorn? You might have to pronounce the photographer's name. Yeah. They're launching a self-published book mm -hmm. that um, where, where, um, this photographer talks about, you know, how a certain book, one of the books was incredibly successful and talks about all the different outlets. And then the most recent book was not as successful. So it's like, you still have to kind of almost reinvent yourself in some sort of ways. And speaking of that, the marketing, which you are really good at, Swanee, the marketing section is phenomenal phenomenal in here too. We created a whole marketing strategy for people to have as a core of building it. And then of course, at the back of the book, there is, um, I think these two pieces are really helpful people for people that haven't made a book before. The first one is the design and production timeline. So it's one year from the start to the finish of the book. And then after that is a marketing timeline, which starts years before you're starting to make the book because I want you all to buy your URL and lock in some branding. And then it goes years after the book's released because we hope that you'll have a traveling exhibition that again, will help to keep the book alive. So we try to give people visuals that they can learn from in a really clear, simple way and envision their book fitting into a model that will help the whole happen. That's true. There's actually, there's different ways to learn. There's like the visuals, there's graphs and timelines, and then there's the, the more sort of intellectual, you know, words, but um, it, which is, is just to say, this is also, I mean, if, if you walk away with anything, we want you to understand that making a book is really a collaborative experience there's going to be a lot of people involved even if you remain in control and you're not necessarily hiring a design you know it's whatever it is there's still a lot of of people involved um from designers to printers to whoever is doing your shipping like all of these parts um play a role and so it's collaborative and you need to kind of understand that um and it's also very, it's wildly diverse. Like the possibilities now are, are truly endless. There's so many, there's so many possibilities. So the book is just now literally just about to hit stores. You can pre-order it, of course, at radiusbooks.org, or I think you can also pre-order on, on Amazon. Um, but we're so excited for this third edition 
to hit. And it really is in many ways, it's a, it's a, it's a totally new book. Yeah. Um, and we just, so. we really believe it's going to help all of you make your book without any yeah. question. And That's when will it. the website launch? We're planning on launching the website at the same day as our first signing, which is going to be August 5th at Radius and their sign-a-thon that they're doing all day. And Darius and I are on the 11 o'clock slot that day with some other great bookmakers. And uh, because that's the first time that the QR code that's in the book, but also on the back of the workbook, will send people there. So we are going to launch on August 5th and continue to grow it, of course. Well, I think we're going to wrap up now. I wanted to find out if there's any last thoughts or inspirations or things that you, maybe something that you learned in doing this new edition, anything, any kind of insights that you might want to share. I like Darius's kind of wrap up about what this new edition is about and the idea of collaboration. Is there anything else that you might want to finish as your parting thoughts? You know, for me, I think what I've learned the most in the last two years of research on this, twofold. One is the broader audience mm -hmm. reaching into the collections. It's been extraordinary to learn from the academic and curatorial and public librarians about how important the photo book is to them and their audience. And the second thing for me, and partly because I have great friends that are artist bookmakers and handmade bookmakers, is really how important the choices and materiality are for the reader to be able to step into your voice in your book. So mm -hmm. no cookie cutter here, you know, really listen to yourself and listen to your story, seek help. If you haven't had a chance to test lots of papers, look at bookmakers that you admire, look at the colophon, see what those papers were, what those bindings were, see if there was a place like a conveyor that helped you make the, the book, uh, Dats Press. But um, you really can bring your voice to the book in very different ways if you dive into that research. And I love, I really, just as a parting thought, I love when people reach out and say, I read your book and it helped me with whatever book. And so I, I hope everybody just continues to, to let us know what the feedback is. And also when you publish something like tag us on Instagram or, or send us a picture or something, it's, it's really great. We, we, we each have our own Instagram accounts. I'm Darius Himes. Swanee is, I think you're MV Swanson, right? No, full name. Yeah, full Mary name. Virginia Swanson. And, and then the book also has an Instagram account, just publish your photography book. So feel free to tag us. We're looking forward to seeing how this, um, how this, shapes things and how people respond and share your books definitely we'd love to see them good well thank you both i've enjoyed Melanie, my time thank you so today. much yeah. thanks thanks so much so great get your copy yeah, so <laughs> bye. Right. bye bye